Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. We got a marathon of a video for you today, so I hope you are sitting down. We're going to provide you with an amalgamation of information that you're not going to hear condensed into one space and some exclusive info from yours truly that I just received from one of our primary distributors of shipping and packing supplies. If this is not an indication of where the market is going, then nothing is. Recall yesterday I talked about inflationary pressures and what I am doing with every red cent of my disposable income, including and not limit, limited to the purchasing of the following products, firewood, non-perishable food items, animal food, soil, fertilizer, socks, underwear, paying off debts, if that makes financial sense for you, toilet paper, kerosene, propane, miscellaneous fuel products, toiletries, soaps, detergents, medical supplies, solar panels, renewable energy sources like lithium battery banks, uh, homesteading tools, metal tools, canning tools, gold precious metals, even a freeze dryer if you got enough disposable income available. Go watch that video I did yesterday. We'll explain it in more depth. But this is the message that I got today. Okay, now this is from a company who has already raised its prices between 15 to 20% in the past year. And we are told that the CPI is only 8.5%. Remember, they are not selling food. They are selling packing and shipping supplies. Already our shipping costs through Canada Post and USPS are through the roof. Now get this, storing fuel costs, ongoing labor challenges and constant supply chain issues continue to bring historic inflationary pressure on us all. As your business partner, we continue to fight hard and absorb significant cost increases. Despite relief in certain areas, costs continue to increase. Effective September 4th, 2022, Uline will raise pricing on your quoted items by an average of five to 10%. An additional 5 to 10%. That might not seem like a lot. It wouldn't seem like a lot if we hadn't already seen historic price increases already from that same company this year. And it's not their fault. They're doing what they can. It's just the nature of the industry right now. So costs are going up. This is why I strongly encourage people. If you got a, money, a lot of money festering away in the bank, I personally don't think the stock market is going to be able to bounce back enough in order to keep pace with inflation. So what I am doing is every single cent that I get, and I mean that, I am looking for uh, places to invest money into hard assets, commodities, real things that are tangible, because I know the price is gonna go through the roof, especially after this winter. And, and let me tell you, you know, if you don't have much time to sit through the rest of this video, my God, is there ever the perfect storm of events brewing right now? Okay, so let's just dive into this. Um, the biggest story of today with respect to the war front and possibly one of the most concerning pieces of information is this UK plan to move warplanes to civilian airports, and this is the reason why, okay? Britain is preparing to station combat aircraft in civilian airports for the first time since World War II in response to the Ukraine conflict. The Daily Express reported on Sunday, the dispersing of planes across the country will help the Royal Air Force Rapid Response Units survive attacks on their bases, the newspaper said. The Agile Combat Employment ACE scheme was initially intended for potential hotspots overseas. So we have the UK preparing to fight the Russians. Recall, this is the same military, who the, the head of the military, um, Patrick, whatever his face is, he said that we need to prepare for war with the Russians. You need to tell your family that you likely will be deployed to go and fight the Russians. I mean, this is unbelievable. This is a day after Belarusian president said that his military are now ready to accept nuclear weapons. I mean, this is just, this is crazy how fast this is progressing. A Ukrainian expert urges to prepare for war on the territory of Russia and Belarus. If you didn't know, there's a major counteroffensive going on in Kyrgyzstan today, which has already seen the deaths of hundreds, if not thousands of people. This is a massive battle that is being fought and there really is no news I mean, there's there's news, but you got to go searching for it. I mean, we're living in the information age. How come we don't know exactly what is going on? And like I said, you can go and you could you could find this information, but it's not readily available. Nobody is paying attention to the fact that there is a major conventional war being fought 
right now, people are dying. While I do this video, several people will die in that war. And it is getting bloody and it is escalating fast. You got Belarus talking about arming nuclear weapons. There are reports from Western sources that the Russians have moved tactical nukes into Crimea. Now take that one with a grain of salt. That is reported by Western experts, okay? But you also have the potential now for uh, all, the, all the things are in place for Belarus to hold nuclear weapons. and to, to, uh, Now what Putin's scheme is with that, I don't know. But um, Oleg Soskin, a Ukrainian economist, believes that the war is going to last a long time and that they need to prepare to fight on Belarusian and Russian so soil. The goal is quite clear, to finish off this unfinished Moscow empire. So these guys are talking about this taking potentially 10 to 15 years to break up Russia. Now, I can tell you with certainty that before that even becomes... Before that process even gets initiated, nuclear weapons are going to fly. Okay, never mind the fact that they're already handing out uh, radiation pills, iodine pills uh, to Ukraine. They're shipping them in from Europe because of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant situation. There's reports that the roadways into the nuclear facility have been bombed out so the IAEA inspectors can't go in there and uh, see what exactly is going on. Both Russia and Ukraine are blaming the other ones for doing that. So something is going on, guys. Big stuff is happening right now. And man, I just, I am so, I've never been, it's, it's never been so clear to me how close we are to the collapse of Western civilization. I mean, everything is just lining up like it's... Okay, let's just keep going here. Um, we got the Prime Minister of New Zealand, Jacinda Ardern, explains why the world is facing a nuclear cliff in an opinion piece in The Guardian. In the Guardian. She says that the world is currently at greater risk of nuclear destruction than at any time during the height of the Cold War. This is a person who is typically, generally, quite reserved in her comments of that nature. So, I mean, not, not that we needed to know that, but, um, you know, Dmitry Medvedev goes on emotional rampage about the West. He's becoming far more hawkish. Okay, now apparently he said this, and I don't know if this is true. I hate them. They are bastards and degenerates, referring to Westerners. They want us, Russia, dead. As long as I live, I will do my best to make them disappear. Remember, he is the former president of Russia and potentially present in the future. He could potentially take Putin's place at some point again. Um, we already talked about Russia moving tactical nuclear weapons to Crimea after yesterday's unprecedented Ukrainian barrage and attempt to saturate Russian air defenses. Recall attacks on Crimea for the Russians were a red line. Okay, now the these... The big offensive, the counteroffensive, is now happening. And uh, we've known that that was going to happen for some time. And I guess we'll see what happens. But, uh, yeah, they're handing out iodine pills. And it's not looking good. Um, according to Medvedev, Russia can't stop the war, even if Ukraine decides to drop its NATO bid. Well, I mean, that's that ship has sailed long, long ago. Uh, the reason why this war is so important, if it hasn't occurred to people yet, because of the cessation of flow of natural gas to Europe, it is going to disrupt industry. It's, it, in, industry. it's going to raise the cost of everything that is associated with industrial activities and production that require natural gas. Okay, things like fertilizer. The price of fertilizer is global. And because Europe is going to be struggling with these high natural gas prices, that is going to continue a sustained elevation in the price of fertilizer, which they are predicting is going to lead to a black swan event of, of sorts for next growing season. Now, the next stack of papers, my God, Russia decides to cut all gas to France. Russian energy giant Gazprom has informed French energy major Ingi about, Ingi, I don't know how to pronounce that, about a reduction of gas delivery starting 
August 30th. The press release reportedly said that the reason for this immediate supply cut is due to disagreements over supply contracts. We'll get back to that in a minute. But before I get, we have instability mounting in Libya, which is a major oil exporter, and Iraq. Okay, this is why oil spiked yesterday, because there were some concerns that they were storming the, uh, the parliament building or whatever it was there, the green zone. Apparently that has subsided for today anyways. But if you get Libya flaring up, Iraq flaring up, this Iran nuclear deal doesn't appear to be moving at all because even uh, some members of the JCPOA are saying that the expectations being placed on Iran are unjustified and are, are excessive. So there is a possibility that that plan falls through. Israel decides to strike Iranian nuclear facilities. The whole Middle East flares up and uh, we got ourselves several hundred dollars a barrel oil, which the shale and tar sands will enjoy because that's the only way that they can remain operational, okay, is if they have a high price of oil. That's what a lot of people fail to realize that, okay, you can have shale, you can have tar sand oil, but just expect to be paying out the yin yang for the gas for the gas for the rest of your life. Now, oil is down today, like I said, because the violence has subsided, but we'll see how long that lasts. I ain't setting my watch to that. State of emergency declared in Macedonia due to uh, energy shortages. Like I said, we have nitrogen uh, costs increasing as a result of the high price of natural gas, and that could potentially be a black swan event for the food industry next year. As farmers are waiting to see, should I buy my fertilizer now or should I wait? Uh, Medvedev sees gas prices in Europe reaching 5,000 euros before year end. 5,000 per 1,000 cubic meters. That's going to mean riots and bread lines. We have Polish homeowners lining up for days ahead uh, to buy coal for the winter time. Get this, hundreds of cars and trucks have already lined up at the Lubelski Weigel coal mine as householders fear of winter shortages wait for days and nights to stock up on heating fuel ahead of the coming cold winter in queues reminiscent of communist times. This is beyond imagination, a person said. People are sleeping in their cars. I remember the communist times, but it didn't cross my mind that we could return to something even worse. Worse than communist times. Arthur's household is one of the four million in Poland that rely on coal for heating. Granted, these households are probably in better shape than the ones relying on natural gas, whose price is rising by 10 to 20% every day and is now almost literally in the stratosphere, okay? Now, Poland does produce a lot of its own coal. However, imported coal, much of it from Russia, is a household staple because of competitive prices and the fact that Russia, Russia's coal is sold in lumps more suitable for home use. More stories about uh, the EU facing an awful winter without gas. Uh, Belgium's energy minister has warned that EU countries will face five to ten terrible winters if nothing is done to mitigate gas prices. What are they going to do? You know, where are you going to get the money from? You can't get blood from a stone. Now, according to Rebecca Babin, she's a senior energy trader at CIBC Private Wealth. Get a load of this. She says that in spite of the fact that uh, gas prices have been down for 70 straight days, she predicts there is two big factors which could actually cause that price to increase. She argues that both factors could cut oil supply, pushing prices higher and rippling through to gasoline. So she says... Um, even if demand dips, supply will dip with it. And I don't see a significant pullback. If anything, the gasoline prices on the national average will probably rise from here, she says. And... Right, okay, so the two factors are is that the suspension of the release of oil reserves by the Biden administration in November and the fact that Europe is due to implement sanctions on Russia in December. Those two things could potentially push gas prices through the stratosphere. 
So, learn how to ride a bike. Um, Russia has been burning off natural gas, about $10 million worth of gas every day, apparently. In Ukraine, they are preparing for the hardest winter in modern history coming this year. UK energy bills jump by 80%. Unbelievable. India continues to restrict wheat exports. And why wouldn't they? They have a population of 1.5 billion and the country ain't that big. They see what's coming. And part of the reason for this is the heat wave that has been damaging their harvests. Okay. So uh, the government cites food security after heat wave stunted domestic wheat output and drove up prices. China is stockpiling and India is hoarding. Finnish firm warns of a toilet paper shortage. During the we recent weeks, uh, Metsa Tissue has had to curtail its production both in one, I can't pronounce the name of the place, Slovakia and Germany, for several days because of the high energy price peaks. So, you're not even going to be able to wipe your butt. But it's okay because you won't have anything to eat anyways. I shouldn't be so facetious. This is real. This is serious stuff, guys. Uh, Russia can afford... Uh, a complete halt in gas supplies to the EU, according to Bloomberg. They're saying that Russia could keep gas exports to Europe at 20% for at least three years and not have it significantly impact their economy. Are you guys ready for three years of these kind of videos? I hope not, because uh, me and TA Outdoors and City Prepping and all the boys from Think Preparedness, we have plans to do other videos, but it's just shit's hitting the fan. What else can you do? Uh, Taiwan has, for the first time, attempted to shoot down a drone. I don't know if they actually successfully shot it down, but they attempted to shoot down a Chinese drone. This is how it starts. Okay, the U.S. continues to send delegations to Taiwan, and now there is a potential $1.1 billion arms sale to Taiwan. This is all just uh, telegraphing the future. And this is all cementing a major war in that region at some point in the future. And of course, Ch China has deployed more ships and jets near Taiwan in response to this, including four nuclear capable bombers. On any other day, that would be front page news. Um, apparently there's something going on between Turkey and Greece. I don't know about it. They're saying potentially war could break out there any day. So I, I don't know how that's going to factor into the whole NATO scheme because I, as far as I know, they're both NATO countries. Uh, under about half of Pakistan is underwater due to floods. Unbelievable. The refugee crises are going to continue to mount in all of these countries along the equator who are dealing with either you know major heat waves water shortages or flooding are going to be looking for a place to go and they're going to continue to enter places that aren't so densely populated where fuel and food is more abundant and that is going to destabilize those regions it's going to cause political upheaval it may well lead to uh, the rise of God knows what kind of populist governments. And we will see World War II all over again. Mark my words. Um, this is just an interesting factoid, okay? The average energy returned on the investment into tar sands oil. Now get this. The average oil that you get from one barrel of, you know, mining conventional, and we're talking like Saudi Arabia, you get about 25 barrels for every barrel that you invest because it takes energy to get energy. Okay. So one to 25, that's a pretty good ratio for the tar sands. It's just 2.9 to one. This is why they need sustained high prices in order to get that shale oil, in order to get that tar sand oil. That's the only way it's lucrative. So maybe oil hasn't peaked, but now we're going right to the source rock. This is the last the last stuff there is. You may find a, a few good wells here and there of the of the good stuff, but this is the last, you know, uh, th this is where oil comes from before it pools up into those into those um, oil wells that we're, we're accustomed to, you know, that, you know, what do they call it? Uh, 
I got the theme song in my head right now, the Beverly Hillbillies, that kind of oil, right? Where you just shoot it and it just starts spitting out of the ground. We don't have the, as much of that stuff to go around anymore. And this is just something for you guys to keep in mind. We're going to be bringing an energy expert, hopefully on the channel, if they oblige. And they're going to talk all about the reality of uh, energy shortages right now. China still in the grip of drought. They had the longest heat wave in recorded history. The longest heat wave in recorded history, the longest sustained elevated temperatures above plus 40 uh, within that region in history. Now they're trying to do cloud seeding and there's flooding taking place. Is the flooding a result of the cloud seeding? It's hard to say because typically after droughts, you get floods. Anyways, guys, the shit's hitting the fan. So I hope you're preparing, preparing for a long cold winter at least here in north america we'll still have natural gas but uh we might also have radioactive fallout so that's something to contest with i would strongly encourage you if you want to support the channel check out canadianpreparedness.com we we're an honest business we provide you guys with the best quality gear at the best possible prices i can tell you right now that shipping costs are just destroying us they're just literally destroying us even amazon right now i'm noticing a lot of the prices on amazon have gone up okay that's kind of the the bait and switch right is they got everybody on there now they're they're raising the prices and uh that's something to be very mindful of when you're shopping online and be be very careful with import fees things of that nature there's no import fees when you order from the united states from us at least for now while we have supply we're going to keep trying to get that supply while we can so you can get all your preparedness food good quality tasting food which is not going to be uh, a morale buzzkill when it all hits the fan because that's the last thing you need so go check that out and uh, check out a lot of our recent videos we've been putting on a lot of content lately go check out the blue strip stuff if you go to the homepage, canadian prepper you'll see the spread of all of our more evergreen style content which is more how-to practical information is not just daily doom and gloom stuff because you know you have to be matching this with actually going and taking action and get to the gym Go outside, go for a walk, do something physical because physical health is going to be the number one commodity when it all hits the fan. Thanks for watching, guys. You stay safe. Canadian Prepper out.